It's a natural laxative. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Bradley, don't eat too much. Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to my greenhouse. I collaborated with Sproutwell on this so they have sponsored the greenhouse and when they sent this over they also sent me some sprout pots and those are pots that are kind of self-watering and you can connect them straight to the hose so basically you'll never ever have to water them yourself and I thought it would be nice to set them up and start growing some veggies, some herbs uh, and some little plants for bread in there so cat grass, catnip and so on. I have no idea about these things. Uh, it's the first time me actually growing some edible stuff. Um, and it's obviously winter and I know that you can't grow everything in winter. I'm an impatient person. So I wanna get it started, see if it works out. And if it doesn't, I'll redo it in spring when I've done a little more research. But I'm curious to try out the pots. So I thought I'll take you along. Let's have a look. Besides having a huge cardboard box for bread, let's unpack. Oh wow, they're quite large, huh? And this one is a stand, I think, for it. It's huge. Okay. While I'm doing this, I think one thing I also wanted to clarify when I was building the greenhouse, obviously it was challenging to build the greenhouse, there were so many parts and I was, I was getting a little bit frustrated with the instructions, but ultimately actually the construction was not as hard as I thought it would be and I have to say we had all the right parts. The mistakes I made were definitely my mistakes, but we had all the right parts. We even had like all the right screws. Like we literally have zero screws left over. So we definitely did it correctly, I think. And if I would ever have to build one again, I feel like I would be really fast at it now. It was just a learning curve at the beginning. But once you kind of understand the, um, like the idea behind it, once you kind of understand the way that they write the instructions, it was getting easier and easier for sure. Now, also, I don't know, this, this stand is a bit bigger than I expected, so I don't really know if I'm going to keep this in my greenhouse for forever. It also doesn't really match the color of my greenhouse. I would love to have it in black. Maybe I can spray paint it. But maybe in summer, when it's nice and warm and humid, I can just put these grow pots uh, outside instead. I don't know. I think if you just want to grow some herbs and some veggies, maybe having a greenhouse is a little overkill. But for now, while I have nothing else to fill the greenhouse with, might as well pop it in here. It is large. I think in summer, I'll just move it over there, outside of the greenhouse. Now this has room for four, but I think I just want to set up two for now, which means I can use the second half of this shelf. It's actually going to be good because I can get some of these plants off of the floor because the floor is cold, right? So I just need those two. So it's gonna be here and here. She leaves me for plenty more room over there. Perfect. So I can lift these all off the ground. All right, insert each water stick into the separate hole from the bottom of the so these are the water sticks. So this is basically what's going to wick up the water. One and two. So these things stick out. Perfect. All right, and this is supposed to reach two thirds into the soil box. So let's do it like this. Two thirds, not all the way up. Okay, we can pop it on here. 
put the salt box on the water reservoir. Oh, I already moved on to step three. Jeez. I'm quick. Insert the caster to the hole at the bottom of the water reservoir. I don't know what caster is. I think it's this. The idea behind these is that they're auto-fill. So you connect them to the hose. Each of these water reservoirs has like a little floater. And as soon as this drops, it's going to fill up with water. And then they're all connected to each other. So... We've got these T-joints and these elbow joints to go ahead and do all of this. And I watched the video and in the video they asked me to get rid of the insulation around the hose first. Alright, that fits. So this goes into the hose. So if I get this all set up correctly. I believe this will be autofill self-watering. Like, what else could you possibly ask for? Beautiful. Okay. All right. So I've got this sorted. Let's have a look. So, I just need to connect the rest of the hose here, but basically the water will come through here, then we'll fill this up, and we'll go from here into the second one, down here. And you could do that with four. So this shelf fits four, but I'm only gonna set up two. Okay, let's connect the hose. So let's have a look what happens when I turn on the water to see if I set this up correctly. I just very gently turned on the water. Uh, no leaks so far. Good news. So as you can see, it's filling up over here. And the idea is that once it hits this, and this is floating, it will stop. So it's not going to continuously just overfill and overfill. Okay. I like that there is a little leak, but that could easily be my fault. Okay, it's finished. It's working. So see when the water level drops this will go down and more water will bubble through here as the water level rises this will go up and it's closing the valve over here perfect so we can move on to actually potting up so i want to make a big mix of potting mix so what i've done in here and you know i usually avoid store-bought potting mixes but because i need so much of it i thought let's go ahead with it so this is like a tomato and herb uh, organic potting growing mix thing. I just got it from Bunnings. Honestly, I didn't look for anything specific. I actually went with the cheapest. But I want to make sure it has good drainage. Hence the mask. Alrighty, that's good to go. So I've got some catnip. And I've got some cat grass over here. So, let's go. Part to full sun, moderate frost. Okay, we're definitely gonna get not more than moderate frost here. And it's gonna get part sun. Oopsie. So, maybe this is actually a good idea. Maybe it will be a big fail. We will find out. So I just reused the existing potting mix as well. It wasn't bad or anything. And I'll add the new one. Oh, I also bought some slow release fertilizer. Oh my God, I'm useless with gloves. I'm gonna sprinkle some of that in there as well. 
there's probably some people that grow veggies and stuff like that professionally. They're cringing at my skill level. But you know what? YOLO. What's the worst that could happen? It could fail. And I just do it again. That is not a bad thing to me. So as you can see, there's quite perlite heavy. I just think, especially if it's self-watering like that, you can never go wrong with good drainage and aeration. Okay, let's have a look. So we go. Now, more. Alrighty, that's looking good. So now, let's dig that in here. Cat grass, cat nip, cat nip, cat grass. The grass seems to have much better roots. So maybe that's more likely to survive. We will find out. Cat nip and some more cat grass here. All right, it's looking empty and sad. Alrighty, now we just need to water it. Water, water, water. Water, water, water. Got another bag of the potting mix. Alright, I'm back with more perlite. Now I could wet this to make it less dusty. But I don't like to store my ingredients wet. So I will do it just like that. And I'm wearing a mask after all. So it should be all fine. Some slow release for you as well. Ooh, I might have overdosed that. All right, for my herbs, I've got basil, oregano, and coriander. The coriander is already looking really, really sad. <laughs> Let's see. But the basil smells amazing. I'm not gonna disturb the root system. I'm just gonna take the whole thing as it is. Yeah, they are much better rooted than the cat grass. So, higher hopes on those. Alrighty, done. Let's have a look. Oh, it's not that heavy actually. Alrighty, here we are. Okay, let me clean up. So, basically, I just got two of the pots set up. They're all looking really sad at the moment, but they were looking sad already before I planted them up. So I'm just crossing my fingers, hope everything will be fine. Sun is about to hit them. Over here, the coriander looked very sad already. I'm hoping the oregano and the basil are at least gonna be successful. Alrighty, I think that's it. Proof is in the pudding, setting it up is all good, but we want results. Just wanted to let you know already that if you are buying a Sproutwell greenhouse, you can use discount code Jan Sproutwell, I believe it is. I'll confirm it in the description. And if you're spending over $3,000, you'll actually get four of these pots for free with your order. So if you're planning on getting a greenhouse, I can highly recommend Sproutwell and I suppose might as well get the freebie if you're planning on buying it anyway. Well, enough talk. I will see you when there are some results. Alrighty, and we're back. I set these pots up two months ago, so I thought it would be a good time to show you some results. Alrighty, sprout pot number one, where I grow the cat grass as well as the catnip. It's done really well. Both the cat grass and the catnip have definitely grown quite a lot. The second pot with the herbs wasn't quite as successful. Surprisingly, the coriander who looked the saddest at the beginning is the only one that survived. The oregano as well as the basil over here just completely uh, melted away. They rotted or like they had so much mold on them that they just disappeared within a couple of days. So, some sort of mixed results, but I don't think that has anything to do with the pots in themselves, I believe. I think I might have not given these plants the best chances to actually thrive. 
So what I've learned is, first of all, I think I used a really, really poor potting medium. Uh, the quality was really poor um, and it started getting moldy really quickly. And you can still see that on that pot over here. You can see that this potting medium just has like a small film of mold all over it. That mold then spread to the actual plants and they just melted away in absolutely no time. Now, I haven't experienced the same with that second pot, even though I used the same medium, but I think this is getting more direct sun, specifically in the afternoon, and that sun might prevent or kill some of the mold. Um, whereas this pot down below hasn't received any direct sun, even in the afternoon, so I think the mold issues just were a little bit crazier over here. Honestly, I should have seen that one coming, given that the mix is constantly moist through the self-watering technique. Um, I should have really just used a better quality uh, potting mix, I believe. The second thing I learned is definitely I don't have enough airflow in this greenhouse. I still don't have a fan, so um, all of this went downhill pretty quickly, specifically at the beginning because I hardly ever really aired it out, which was definitely my mistake. Since then I've learned my lesson and I open the windows more frequently to air it out and I'm also looking at getting a fan eventually. But probably if I'll do it again, I wouldn't actually do it within the greenhouse because I don't believe any of these plants really benefit from the increased humidity. Um, I would probably do it outside of the greenhouse, which then has another set of challenges, specifically pests, right? But the principle in itself, the, the sprout pots in themselves, are definitely working. I didn't have to do anything for these plants over the last two months. I didn't have to water, I didn't have to uh, provide any nutrients because I put slow release fertilizer in the potting mix. Um, I honestly just did nothing. So it's really a set and forget kind of thing until it's time to harvest. And then obviously uh, I wanna be uh, strategic in the way that I harvest, let's say, so that I don't just kill it all. Like I just harvest a little bit so it can recover quicker than I harvest. Um, so yeah, for now, I'm gonna leave it as it is, but when it gets a little bit warmer, hopefully in a month or so, I'll take this uh, on the other side of the greenhouse and I'll probably just grow some plants, uh, some, and I'll probably just grow some veggies outside. But there's one important test that we still need to make. That is the taste test. I need to see if Brett even likes what I've grown for him. All right, so let me get this down so my baby can give it a try now i've done my research i'm pretty sure cats can eat fresh catnip usually you know it's dried and they kind of smell it they can eat it but i don't think they're supposed to eat really large quantities of it but i'm pretty sure Brad is smart enough to only eat as much as he likes let's say so let's see where he is and let's see i reckon he's gonna love the grass bradley look it's for you I grew this for you. It's your garden bed. You get cat grass and cat nip. Going with the cat grass first, yeah? Hey, how do you feel about cat nip? No? I really like the catnip though, it smells great. You enjoying your little garden bed? It's just for you, my baby. You're loving it, huh? So, I just jumped on Google. So apparently cat grass relieves indigestion. It's a natural laxative. Oops, <laughs> Bradley, don't eat too much. Uh, it's parasite prevention, aids in removing hairballs, it provides vitamins and minerals, and it provides mental stimulation. Okay, see, I told you, he knows when he's had enough. But that was a success, I think, right? So I think every now and then I'll let him eat some of his cat grass, you know, mow the lawn a little bit. <laughs> and obviously once I start putting it outside as well, he'll have uh, easier access to it and I should definitely move it to the bottom shelf so he can reach it. Definitely a success with the sprout pots. One other thing I wanted to mention, I definitely had to, uh, I had to use some plumber's tape. Um, 
where the, uh, you know, at the, the reservoir where the little uh, hose connects, I had to use some plumber's tape over there because it was leaking a little bit. But after I put some plumber's tape on that little joint and then um, and screwed it in really tightly, um, it stopped leaking. So uh, in case you, I don't know if I kind of got it on there wrong in the first place um, or not, but the plumber's tape has definitely solved that for me. And I really like the way that it works as in that it's absolutely no, no effort involved from my end whatsoever. So I would deem it as a success. Some of it has grown successfully and from the other parts that didn't grow successfully, I learned something and I can take that and then uh, I can do a better job uh, with the next set of veggies and herbs that I want to pot up really soon. Again, thank you so much Sproutwell for sponsoring the greenhouse as well as providing me with the Sprout Pots. I'll leave all of their information down in the description if you'd like to check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.